I'm about to start. What's up? I was just going to ask. My ear is all itchy. Oh. Okay, just hang on there. Hang on. Let me just... All right, that was timing. Just popping out the chat. All right. It's Tuesday, but it feels like a Monday for some reason. Yeah, I've got to work out how to open this thing up. Anyway, we've got a collapsed power button, so I'm hoping it's going to be comparatively standard. Otherwise, it's going to make my life comparatively unpleasant. Scam tool, right? Yes. Yeah, so well, we'll go completely off with you around, Pedro. And I just realised I have not done my duty and cleaned the workbench. Uh, we have got glass remnants from this afternoon's iPhone repairs. Now I know these things have got probably tough plexiglass or acrylic front, same thing sort of, but uh, still don't want to be dragging them over glass. Don't mind of a chance. Mm. It's hard to say whether they will make this easy or difficult to disassemble. In some ways you think, well, you know, they're t technician people, they should respect that it's annoying to have difficult to separate items. But on the other hand, they may go, we're the superior technicians. Therefore, we're going to inhibit you from being able to open this stuff up. Guess we'll see. Now, there is an inner panel here, but I'm not sure whether it's related or not. And the, the outside does have a... Uh, Yeah, it's a um, definitely a very. It's likely an expensive tool. Okay. Although I know that Rain Man repairs. He invest. I remember him talking about investing quite heavily into getting something like this. So yeah, I'm going to assume that these aren't the cheapest things on the planet. might take this inner panel out just in case <sighs> although I can't actually see what oh here we go there's a little bit of a lip here Okay, that's a battery compartment. So does this separate off? Alright, so this can actually separate off, that's good. Mm. 
Well, at least they've made that comparatively modular. Let's get this off completely. It's just another abstraction that I don't really need in my way. Uh, Pedro, it's, it's a G-I-T. Git. That's why it says on the title. The title. Anything hidden under here? Appears not. Now the question is whether it pivots off. Like it's got latches at the front that are hooked in. Or whether it's just complete snap off. Obviously you don't want to go to add it too hard. But it'll be a little bit slow on the task. Use your patience. Oh, okay, this is a drawing penny thingy. I'll take that off too. All these little things, they're convenient while the device is in use, but while you're trying to work on it, they are quite a nuisance. It's frustrating when you get these things 60% disassembled and then that last 40% decides it's going to be difficult. And it's probably one of those things that once you've disassembled it one or two times, you can pretty much do it in your sleep. Stick a spudger into here. And hopefully, not subject myself to the spudger directly. <laughs> mm, being quite reluctant. Because the whole time you're always worrying, listening, waiting, all that dreaded plastic snap noise. Looks like someone else has been chewing away at this. Yeah, we've got a bit of a rubber bumper for the um, bar for the leaning, but does it conceal a screw? No, it does not. So it's not made by Hewlett Packard. Hmm.
the flippity flip. Somehow I don't think they have a disassembly guide. Surprise, frickin' surprise. Why would why would a company that makes something that deals with repairing something consider to have their device repairable? I said we're just sort of stalled on some clips somewhere, and it's it's a um, it's a gamble between myself and the clips. It's like I don't know who's going to win. Or lose. I can't see anything to take the tray out. It looks like a molded piece, single molded piece. I gotta say, it's annoying already. <laughs> I'm just trying to visually see down here if I can spot anything. Certainly, I can't seem to see any extra like um, mounting stumps or anything like that. Okay, just needed a little bit more. All right, so looking at the flexes in there, we've got a fold there, so it definitely has to have come off this way. Oh, there we go. Jeez, do you have a, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, I gotta admit, that is a sensible design. That's a little bit short on that flex there. But other than that, that's pretty sensible. Okay, so this is a collapsed button and I can, yeah, I can see. Looks like it's a pretty typical right angle two or three millimeter type attachment. Flick that off. Yes, Andrew, it always is a worrying moment when you... I so said it's a real gamble between taking it too far And whoever designed this, if they were watching this video, they'd be like, we made it easy, you just got to use a bit more force. It's like, it's scary, man, it's scary. Yeah, this is a multi-thousand dollar tool. And I'm going to be the one coughing up the cash if things go wrong. Okay, so we've got another wiggle out. F it's not really a wiggle out flex, but... Looks like it's either side. There we go. 
Oh, oh yeah, you can see it's punched it right through. Let's have a look at the circuit board. Looks like a nice design to be honest. Yeah, okay. I've definitely got to give them credit. It's a nice design. The routing is actually very nicely done. Uh, the actual trace routing. I don't know whether someone did this themselves or whether it's a you know um, smart automatic router. It looks like it's had some pretty good human influence here. You know they've tried to keep things nicely organized. Yeah, it's definitely it's a well done board I'd say. So a thumbs up to that. And you know they've kept physical items like these switches away from the delicate circuitry so that you know if something does go wrong it doesn't take out something important. Robust connections, good soldering. Yeah, oh, I'm quite impressed with that. Well it, it could be a guided routing so you put the parts down and you sort of indicate where you want the buses to flow and then the auto router sort of does the rest within your parameters. But anyway, this, that's why our switch is dead because it's being just pushed out. They've even got like protection xenodiodes on there. That's impressive. You don't normally see that around, but I guess being automotive gear, yeah, they've decided to do it properly. About the only gripe I might have is that they put veers into the inners of the traces as opposed to offset slightly, but yeah, you're just being a nitpicker if you do that. Lewis is earned after John Deere for GPL violation. Oh, this will be interesting. The sad thing is, the most likely outcome of that is that John Deere will just close off even more. I know there's been a few other there's been a few other businesses in the past that have been pulled up on GPL violations, and they just they just shrink in even more, and you get even less out of them. But I hope it works out, but yeah, it depends. Is it GPL2 or GPL3 that is they're going after? Anyway, we're just going to put some leaded on there to make my life easier. I'm trying to wonder if I can just manually split this off. I might just gently hot air it off. GPL2, okay. Because yeah, there's been plenty of companies in the past pulled up on their GPL violations, but not a lot tends to happen. You don't really get the whole, yay, we killed the evil we slayed the evil monster and now they're gonna give us all their source code and stuff like that it, it just doesn't happen that way I wish it did but it doesn't so I'm just lifting this up so it's easier for me to take the um, corpse of a switch off Hey there, Toby. Yeah, 
I might need a little more performance going on here. Come on. These can be a little bit tricky to pull out sometimes if those legs are crimped inwards. And they do tend to have this grabbing effect. Now normally if it was my own gear what I would do is tend to just cut the, uh, split the outer shell off and then pull these out individually. Ah oh, damn it, yeah, now I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble here because I do not have a steady, I need to get something better to put this on. Ah. Well, it's scary. I don't seem to have something that I can use. I might actually clip it out at this point. All right, I'll see what I've got. See what I'm dealing with. getting embarrassed. And I used to have to, used to have to do this sort of bollocks when, um, when I used to make some radio control gear and every now and then due to the heat issues I would have to redo all the tactile switches like this man I'm seriously out of practice it's oddly more difficult under the microscope but at the same time I can't really do it without the microscope okay that one's free right. okay No, Wiccan low melt isn't really required for this. It's just a case of Mr. Daniels has been a little bit, uh, a little bit sloppy and slow in his age. There we go. Yep. Just a case of finding the right technique without shredding the board. I'm really not a fan of using low melt solder in most cases. There we go more a case of find the appropriate technique and go for it from there. There are the occasional scenarios where low melt is required but a lot less than I feel people jump into.
Like I'm pretty sure that top pad there is already slightly lifted, I can feel it. So I'm not happy about that. Jeez, that's a lot of solder in there. That is a lot of solder in there. That one cleared up nicely, thankfully. Yeah, the, the back ones are just uh, physical restraint. The front ones are the actual signal lines. Uh, I knew I should have gone and got myself a new piece of wick, but no. Thought I could suck it up with that last little bit of wick but I was wrong intuition was right laziness was wrong yeah and you see now I've made my life difficult because it's sunk down too far there we go alright now we can clean up our mess Would have been nice if I could have just hot aired it out in one piece without having to go through all this rigor remote. Yeah, let's try to constrain the flux spreadage. Yeah, I really don't like the idea of there being unwanted flux floating around on the board. Because they've done such a nice job on this board and they've washed it so nicely. It feels terrible to actually sully it up. Now I've got to see if I can find a switch that will suit the job. I may have to trim down an extended one. Guess we'll see. of switches these are a little bit long and they may not have the right footprint but we'll have a look let's see what others I might have I don't have that many right angle types most of what I have are just um, upright Oh, not upright, just anyway, they're not right angle. That one there may be a little short. So I've got one where the protrusion is too long, and I've got another one where the protrusion is too short. Well, that just sounds like life in general. Yeah, I think you're the same. Alright, so we may have to take the long one and just shave its shave its um, shaft down a bit
run a comparison here. Actually, yeah, maybe the shorties will do it. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much bang on. Now to see if the footprints match. Shockingly, they do. Huh. Wow. Well, I've only been holding on to that switch for 15 years. Finally came into use. Alright, now the trick for me is to not to butcher up that uh, switch membrane assembly because I don't know if you remember but we've we've had our fair share of switches dying because the membrane gets too hot so we'll have to be swift our creature was from the model aircraft times from when I was making those like um, internal battery resistance meters and things like that that's what they're from. So we heat up the pad. Go in quick. Too quick. There we go. There's a little bit of um, head and pillowisms going on there. Looks like I really don't want to sit on it for long. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. They're not wicking all the way through anyway. In fact, I wicked through probably more than they did. Of course, all this is going to do is reinforce my bad habit of not throwing things out. <laughs> Oops. No, I do want to clean up that flux though. The trouble is trying to clean up. Oh, great. The multi me, the thingy jig. Yeah. I know, I can see it. Come on, flick over. Great, you're not even working. Something new and exciting. Come on, yeah, there you go. Good job. I'm not sure why I'm bothering with the flux, but yeah, I just don't like leaving more flux than I have to behind. And if it takes me a couple of minutes to wash this up, then so be it. Yeah, so you can see, probably due to the age of the connectors, there would have been a little bit of corrosion on those pins. And so they haven't fully wicked, the solder hasn't fully wicked onto them. But look, I'll be honest and say, given that we're dealing with tiny amounts of current into those connections it's not something that's I'm gonna worry about there's a decent enough portion that has wicked up onto the pin so I think we're gonna be okay hey Corey um, usually I charge about one hour's worth of labor so that'd be 132 Australian dollars for this
How much would you charge, creature? Two hours? $250? Charges like a lawyer. Oh, okay, so it would be 15 minutes at $1,700 an hour. I get you now. That's that's smart. Okay, I think we can say that's pretty damn clean now. All right, let's do the reassembly. And hopefully, we don't botch that up. Oop, there's a it's so frustrating when you can't get it perfect. Arr. The only squawk I would have is that style of connector for there is a little bit awkward but all things considered I mean you gotta admit this is like a hundred times okay that's the noise you wanna hear ah uh, creature that's fun doing that stuff I've been having fun fixing up my software obscure bugs a lot of the bugs are the user side, as in the person using it, but anyway, Pedro's been helping me, so that's how I know it's mostly user bugs. Hey, B blood. But yeah, I mean, overall, I'm very happy with the way they designed this. Like I said, you know, would have been nicer to have a slightly longer flex on that touch cable. But realistically, that's pretty good going. Be nice if more equipment was designed like this. Just got to talk it up. It's going to be used in vehicles. I don't want it rattling loose. fuel gauge, as in uh, you're working with coulomb counters. Yeah, I've done a few of those over the years. Yeah, because I'm just going to bend this over just a little bit more than I would like. But still, it's damn sight easier than most laptops. I'm guessing we just clip back together. Okay, we've got a non clipping situation here. Sometimes it's Yeah, let's plug the battery in, see what happens. Hopefully no smoke, because I'll be in big, big, big trouble if that happens. Or at least I think I will be. Now, this should be charged. Yeah, 
Oh, I saw something. Joho, this is for actually scanning cars. So we got 91%. Oh, what is this? Ensure safety. G scan 3 is battery use. For safety reasons, remove the battery before any further use and contact your distributor. Oh, okay. It looks like they've got a problem. <laughs> Alright. That's all good. At least they've given you um, stuff there. But anyway, it looks like that's uh, working. Seems like it's all good. Yep, seems to be fine. Let's see if we can power it down. I've still got the plastic stuff on there. There's a little, uh, what do you call, what's the thing Caradog hates doing? Uh, peeling off the peels. The peels, that's what it is, yeah. Yep, we're coming back up again. So the button is definitely working, okay. Okay. These battery compartment screws are a Phillips 1, not a Phillips 2. Now, don't want to tighten these up too, too much. They already have a split washer on them, so they're not likely to rattle out. Last thing I want to do is bust the um, the uh, posts. Yeah, ADB tooth diagnosis system. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's coming with this. I don't know whether it's some sort of recall or something like that. It looks like it's for the latest news and something about upgraded battery. So I don't think it's anything to do with us pulling the battery out. I think it's to do with they've actually got a recall or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a recall, not a thing because, yeah, I can see here it says, you know, latest news to register for your G-Scan 3 upgrade battery. Anyway, that is working, so it wasn't too bad after all. Thank goodness for that. I really wasn't in the mood for a difficult thing. Garage, yeah, that's right, you ignore the uh, check engine light. <laughs> Garages depend on you ignoring lights like that. And then that way, when it finally stops running, it's a really profitable job for them. And that pretty much does it for me. Um, my trusty iPhone 7 Plus died last night, died in the ass with a NAND failure. So fortunately I have iCloud and it backs up very periodically so I didn't lose much at all. And now I've got an iPhone 11 that I'm using. I don't quite like the display on the 11 as much as I do on the 7 Plus, but you know, what are you gonna do? I can't exactly go out and buy a new iPhone in a hurry. So easier for me to just take the 11, use it, carry on. So if you want some entertainment, look at YouTube videos, washing the cheetah or cleaning the cheetah. What the hell? Yeah, I think I'll avoid that. All right, I'm out of here. Short and sweet. That's how we like it. See you guys next time. Catch you later.